from Hollywood, it's time now for Edmund O'Brien as... Johnny Dollar. The Ambassador Travel Agency calling back, Mr. Dollar. Oh, yeah. Your reservation for Bermuda is just being confirmed. Pan American, flight number 134. You'll leave LaGuardia at 10.30 a.m., arrive at Kindley Field, Bermuda, 2.30 p.m. Got it. We'll send the tickets right over. It's been a pleasure to serve you, sir, and I hope you have an enjoyable stay in Bermuda. Is it a vacation? Well, hardly. I'm going down there to look up a dead man. Edmund O'Brien in another transcribed adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Tri-State Life Insurance Company, attention Leland Scarf, Chief Adjuster. The following is an accounting of my expenditures during investigation of the Earl Chadwick matter. Expense account item one, $1.80, cab fare to your Hartford office. The man has been seen alive, Dollar. I never was satisfied that he was dead. His boat, a small cruiser, was found wrecked, you know, but never a body. How long ago was that? A little over four years ago, 1945. He was declared dead in 1947 in appellate court, and we were forced to meet the claim of his widow, or his wife and accomplice, as it might seem now. Go ahead. Here's the lady that saw and spoke to him. Mrs. Marshall, this is Mr. Dollar. How do you do? Mrs. Marshall? Now, I want you to tell Mr. Dollar what you told me, Mrs. Marshall, if you will. Well, my husband and I had been in Bermuda for three days. Mrs. Marshall... Explain that you knew Earl Chadwick before. Oh, yes, yes, we knew him not too well, thank heaven, but well enough to be pointed out as friends of that embezzler. You know how people are. Embezzler, Mrs. Marshall? Oh, yes, there was attendant theft. He worked at the Monticello Loan Company in New York City. $30,000 disappeared at the same time he did. Police theory was that he wrecked his boat while attempting to leave with the money. Uh, now, Mrs. Marshall... How you happened to see him? Uh, we'd been there three days, and that night we went to this nightclub in Hamilton, slumming, so to speak. It's called the Port of Castile on the waterfront. It had been a number of years, mind you, and Chadwick was much thinner, but I recognized him. He was seated with some sailors, and I said, Jerome, doesn't that look like Earl Chadwick? And then you spoke to him. What else could I do? I was dying of curiosity. When he got up to leave, I met him and said, Aren't you Earl Chadwick? He denied it, of course, but being that close, I'm positive that it was. What did he say? Did he give you a name? No, no, but I found out. I felt I was quite within my rights in asking a few questions. The name he's using is George Brewster. Well, Dollar? What about Chadwick's wife? What happened to her? She remarried one of his business associates, Harold Anderson. Yeah. I had the girls draw up a complete record on the case. Photographs, police reports, everything you'll need. Uh, the wife's address is there in Queens, I think. All right, Mr. Scarf. I'll do what I can. Expense account item two. $250 plane ticket and miscellaneous expenses between Hartford and Bermuda. I drew an aisle seat and one of the worst hazards of air travel or any other kind of travel. I'll tell you something. It pays to study these places before you go to them. Now, I've been out there before. <laughs> Nothing teaches like experience. But before my first trip, I knew more about Bermuda than lots of the folks that lived there, eh? Well, that's very interesting. Yeah, yes, sir. <clears throat> Quite a history. Spoiled now, though. People aren't worth anything anymore. You know what spoiled them? Tourists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, took away all their ambition. Turned them into a bunch of lazy beggars and horse traders. Don't farm anymore. Don't do anything but work the tourists. Now, uh, I don't want to be a wet blanket, you understand? Oh, yeah, yeah. But uh, keep an eye on your wallet. They'll strip you if you give them a chance. Uh, my business is farm tools. What's yours? Yes, sir. My name is Dollar. Here's my credentials. I'd like to see the chief constable. Yes, sir. Yes? Uh, Mr. Dollar to see you, sir, an insurance investigator from the States. Yes, of course. Uh, send him in. Right, sir. 
At that door, Mr. Dollar. Thank you. Pleasure, Mr. Dollar. Your company cabled that you were coming. Sit down. Thank you. Well, now, uh, you're here to look into the affairs of one George Brewster. What's he been up to? I'm not sure he's been up to anything yet. According to a witness, he answers the description of a man who disappeared from New York a few years ago with $30,000. He was declared dead, and the company that hired me paid off an $80,000 insurance claim to his wife. I see. Quite a valuable chap. Yeah, if he is the chap. Now, what about this Brewster? Do you people know him? We acquainted ourselves with him after the cable arrived. Nothing against him. Lives a rather rum life. Doesn't seem to have much. Are his papers in order? Passport? Visas? I uh, trust that he wouldn't be here if they were not. Like any other paradise, Mr. Dollar, Bermuda is forced to accept the existence of a certain percentage of misplaced or lost persons on its outskirts. That's what they are. They? Here's the address. Thank you. At the lower end of King George Road, do you wish transportation? No, no, don't bother. The walk will do me good. I decided against the King George Road address. Instead, I returned to my hotel, memorized the photographs of Earl Chadwick, subtracting a little weight from the somewhat flabby face. And that night, I found myself a table near the door at the Port of Castile. I sat there nursing a minimum of foul drinks. It was 10 o'clock before he came in and found standing space at the bar. George Brewster? Hmm? Or Earl Chadwick? What's the matter with you? What is this? I'm curious, too. How about coming over to my table? All right. You act like a cop. Just 50% cop, no badge. I'm working for Tri-State Life Insurance Company. What does that mean? They insured a man and paid off to his wife. Now, now they are insured he's dead. He belongs to that other name you threw at me. What was it? Chadwick? Earl Chadwick. And I must look like him. Here's a snapshot. Huh. He's fatter, but it's pretty close at that. You know, about a week ago, some crazy old dame I never saw before called me some other name. It might have been Chadwick. I thought she'd drunk over her quota. She was an old friend of Chadwick's. She swears she'd recognize him if, if she saw him. And she swears she saw him. Huh. It's weird, isn't it? I suppose it happens more often than we know about. What do you want? My papers and stuff? They might help. Sure, I'll write down my address. Um, and, uh, uh, come on out anytime tomorrow. Uh, th there you are. Thank you. I should recover from these drinks by noon. Oh, that'll be all right. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? Things like this could get your goat. last night? Probably. I'm Johnny Dollar. Is George here? No, he had to leave. But he said you could come in. He said you could look at this, Chuck. Here's his passport and cards and things. How long have you known him? Oh, two years last month. Do you know where he came from? Never asked me where I came from. Uh, this guy, he looks like. He had a wife? Yeah. I want to take some of his personal things into town to check his prints against this passport. Shaving brush, if he uses one, tubes, jars, anything. You think he's the guy? I'll have to find out. Never mind. Uh, you told me you were going. The prints would check against the passport, but it wouldn't make any difference. Now that it's started, why stretch it out? Why not make it easy? George? No, Earl. I'd almost forgotten. Earl, uh, where can we talk? I've got a hotel room. The statement he made filled in most of the blanks in the case. One, his wife was to have met him in Mexico City, but hadn't. Two, most of the stolen funds had gone to his wife to keep her going until she collected the insurance. 
So she got married. I didn't know that. She told me to wait, and I did. Grace married. We can leave for the States Grace anytime and you're Harold. ready. Grace Huh? Oh, I can be ready anytime you say. All I have to do is pack a few things and say goodbye to Fran. Expense account item three, space for two on New York-bound plane. Chadwick was a hard man to figure out, but one thing I did realize. Now that he'd started, he was almost happy to be going back to the people he'd left. We arrived in the evening, and the next morning, I was told when I telephoned that Mrs. Grace Chadwick Anderson and her husband were at home and would receive me. Oh, good morning. I... Hello, Grace. Harold. I beg your pardon? Oh, I understand, Harold. This must be the man that Mrs. Marshall phoned about, you know, the one in Bermuda. Oh, come now, Grace. That's no good. Who are you, anyway? Mr. Dollar, for what purpose did you and this man come here? I brought him here so you could identify him as your missing husband. That's idiotic. There is the faintest resemblance, yes, but that's all. What, uh, what do you have in mind, Mr. Dollar? Now, no crude extortion attempt like this will get you anything but arrest. I knew Earl Chadwick, and I'll swear under oath that this man is not he. I should think you would, Harold. Who are you, and where did you learn my name? Get him out of here. Why? Why not talk over old times, Grace? Wait a minute. All right, Mrs. Anderson, Mr. Anderson. I'm sorry I've taken up your time. Come on. Dollar, what's the matter? You two? Come on. I'm sorry, dear. I know it's been unpleasant for you. Who do you think I am? I asked you, who do you think I am? That doesn't count. You're legally dead. What about your parents? They're dead. But I have friends or people that knew me. They're no good. If your wife won't identify you, they're no good. You worked for a loan company. They must have your prints. I took them from the files and destroyed them when I left. How are your teeth? What? Teeth. Who was your dentist here in town? Dr. Uh, uh, Field. It's been so long. Dr. Homer Field. Uh, 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 Drake, professional building Manhattan. He'll still have your x-rays on file. They're as good as fingerprints. Go there this morning. Don't use your name. Give him your other name, George Brewster. Have a new set of x-rays taken. I'll do the rest. All right. Hold it. Now, look, I don't have to hire somebody to follow you, do I? No. Oh, no. Not after I've seen them. You don't have to worry about my going anyplace. Expense account item four, $25 services of a private detective. Assignment, tailing Earl Chadwick and or George Brewster. At one o'clock, he had left the dentist's office and gone to his hotel room. At three, he was still there. And at 4.30, I arrived in the office of Dr. Homer Field. Brewster? Oh, yes, yes, his x-rays have come through. They're on the clamps. Uh, don't, don't touch them, please. Uh, what is your interest? Police identification. Oh, oh, yes, yes, well, always happy to cooperate. Thank you. Now, how about digging in your files for the x-rays on a patient named Chadwick? Earl Chadwick. Um, I'd be glad to. Chadwick, 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 Chadwick. Earl M. Chadwick, is that your man? That's the name. Ah, well, 1945. Ooh. He should have been in for hygiene. Those pictures, how do they compare with this new set, Brewster? Well, uh, let's have a look. Ah, oh. there's malocclusion, lower bicuspid, impacted third molar. Ah, erosion inlay, very interesting. You mean they're the same in both sets of pictures? Oh, no, 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 definitely not. Oh. But a man's mouth could change since 1945, couldn't it? Oh, yes, yes, it could, especially with neglect, but that would never cause a man to grow new teeth. Now, you see here, uh, Brewster has one more incisor than Chadwick. The whole character of the, of the mouth is different, I see, here. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I yes. see, it's different, all right. Definitely. Uh, these two men would not look even faintly alike. <laughs> In just a moment, we will return to the second act of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. But first, down the old ox road, learn to croon straight from the shoulder. Milestones in popular American music. 
milestones in the career of one of America's favorite troubadours, Bing Crosby. This Wednesday night, over most of these same CBS stations, you're invited to hear the Bing Crosby Show. Bing Crosby with the music of John Scott Trotter, with the rhythm airs with Ken Carpenter. Here's the show designed for the whole family. A pleasant and diverting mixture of music and merriment, guided by the one and only Bing Crosby. Plan now to hear the Bing Crosby Show this Wednesday night on CBS. And now with our star, Edmund O'Brien, we return to the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Look, Dr. Field, these x-rays labeled Earl Chadwick, could they be misfiled? Could they be under the wrong name? Misfiled? No, definitely not. My assistant has been with me for ten years. Never made a mistake yet. Mm. Well, then could anyone else have gotten in here and planted a different set under that name? But why? I would realize the difference the moment I looked into the mouth. That erosion inlay alone. Yeah, yeah I know. Look, your office, has it been broken into? Yeah, a long time ago, for narcotics. How long ago? Six, seven years ago, during the war. But not since then. I've missed nothing. The janitor, the nightman, does he have a key? Uh, no, no, it's cleaned in the evening just before I leave. Uh, r robbery is out of the question. Uh. Uh, just what is your problem, Mr. Dollar? Well, if I wanted to plan some x-rays in a file, where could I get some? Mm, well, I never thought of it. But uh... Where would I go? Would you give me some? Oh, no, 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 definitely not. That would be most unethical, unless, of course, you were a patient of mine and the x-rays were of your own mouth. Oh, thank you, doctor. I think that's what I wanted to hear you say. Before dark, I made two more stops, searching for something to help me prove that Earl Chadwick was alive, if he was. The Hall of Records had nothing but a couple of certificates on him. One recorded his birth, the other recorded his death. I checked the wanted file at police headquarters. They had checked him out in 47 when the court had pronounced him dead. On my way out of there, I made two phone calls. The second was to the detective I'd hired. Yeah? Landro, what are you doing in your office? Did you lose him or get tired? He was on to me, Dollar. He got into the crowds at Macy's. I put the houseman at his hotel on it. He's watching his door. I just phoned his room. He's not there. What's he been up to? He left the hotel at 318 and took a cab over to 3rd Avenue. What address? A pawn shop, Johnny. He bought a gun. Nice going, Landro. If you decide to change over to stopping traffic at school crossings, use me as a reference. Where's your husband, Miss Anderson? He's here, but he Come doesn't... Come on, I want to talk to you both. You have no right to purging. Where is he? What is it, Grace? Oh, it's you again. That's right. He forced his way into the house. Make him get out, Harold. I will if I have to. Now, look here. I don't know what that imposter has told you, and I don't care. If you choose to believe his lies, that's your business. And a sorry business it is. But I will not allow my wife and my home to be upset by his schemes any longer. Are you through? No, not quite. It's obvious to us, if it's not to you, that this man learned of the unexplained details surrounding Earl's death and is attempting to use this vague resemblance to his advantage. Now, extortionists land in prison, Mr. Dollar. And the only reason I haven't turned to the police before this is that we want to escape the notoriety of having past tragedies lived again. He bought a gun this afternoon. That makes him look like the double-crossed husband, doesn't it? Man's a maniac. I'm going to ask for police protection. Where is he? Who? This man. Do you know where he is? When I found out he bought a gun, I was afraid he was coming here to use it. Harold, I can't believe this is happening. Now, Grace, please. Why, why, why would he harm us? He doesn't know us, and we don't know him. He bought the gun to convince you, Dollar. He knows a lot about you, Anderson. He knows you were Chadwick's immediate superior in the loan company before he disappeared. Harold, it, it couldn't be, could it? Grace. It's been a long time. Maybe some disease could change a person that much. But he would have contacted Grace, me. Grace, Earl is dead. How did this man learn so much about us? As far as I can see, he's made only one mistake. The size of the theft. He says he stole 10,000. According to the record, 30,000 was missing. Of course, it's possible that it isn't a mistake. That somebody in the firm who knew what his plan was picked up the odd 20,000 and put it on Chadwick's account. Mr. Dollar... 
I have one thing to say to you before you leave. Earl Chadwick is dead. You're so right. And that's what troubles me. A legally dead man running around loose with a gun makes an interesting situation. Did you ever think of that? Who would the police look for? I'm going to my hotel in case you want to phone in your answer. <laughs> Where have you been, Chadwick? Right here. The maid let me in. What's the idea? I was scared somebody was following me. I got the feeling they hired somebody to get rid of me. No. Why not? They haven't thought of that yet. Give me the gun. I need it. Come on, where is it? Never mind. Get, get away from me. Come on, where are you carrying? Hey! You... How did you know I had it? What were you going to do with it? I told you I was scared. <laughs> you thought I was going to kill them? The idea crossed my mind. <laughs> no. What good would that do? How should I know what's going on in that head of yours? Why'd you come back, then? Just to get things straightened out. You wouldn't have had to. I haven't found a way to prove who you are. Oh, I knew I didn't have to come back. But everything was stagnant. Being George Brewster was dull. I thought that's what I wanted. A new identity, even without grace. But I guess nobody's ever satisfied. And when you have a choice of who you want to be, then it's really hard... Uh, what about the x-rays? No good. The set under Chadwick didn't match the one you had taken today. They had to. They made a switch with somebody else's, probably Anderson's. It's an easy office to enter. Probably hired a cat burglar. Nothing at the Hall of Records, nothing at police headquarters. You're dead. What did the police say? I didn't talk to them. Why should I? The case is closed. You're dead. <laughs> Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound about with a napkin. Yeah? Landlord, Johnny. No, oh, yeah. Sorry I blew up. Forget it. I lost him, didn't I? How is it? Oh, it's a mess. I'm not getting any place. The only proof I can find is proof that he's dead. Maybe he should stay there. Yeah, I'm getting ideas myself. What about his draft board? They take prints. Police checked in 47. They lost. Look, I'm going to have to dummy up something. I don't want you to violate any trade secrets, but do you know a good forger? That depends. It'll be practically legal. All I need is a driver's license. I think that can be managed, Johnny. When? Tonight. It'll cost. Well, I'm working for a wealthy company. Oh, there's more, too, Landro. How about meeting us in your office in 45 minutes? Sure, Johnny. Bring a bottle. Expense account item five, five hundred dollars, one bogus 1947 driver's license complete with Chadwick's thumbprint. By 10 p.m., we were back in Landro's office. Johnny, how desperate is this, Anderson? Desperate enough to welcome a nice, fast deal. Don't quote a price unless you have to. Just get him down here. Why anybody goes through all this to make prison? <laughs> prison? Come on, Landro, get on the phone. There's the number. You're my client. Mr. Harold Anderson, I'll be blunt. This is blackmail. I'm calling in the interests of Earl Chadwick. No, he isn't. He's alive. But I do have proof. A driver's license he took out just before he disappeared as a sort of a double check on the past. You'll believe it when you see it. It's for sale. He doesn't want to go to prison any more than you do, but he needs money. I said you'd believe it when you saw it. I think it'll be worth a trip over here. We'll talk price then. Uh-uh, we meet here. Number 465 Tight Building, 7th Avenue. It's no bluff. Nobody knows about it. Uh, I'll be alone. He doesn't believe it. When will he be here? He said 45 minutes. Good. Now, don't make the price too high. Set up a meeting with him tomorrow, and we'll have the police here. Well, step forth, Lazarus. Empty the ashtrays, Landro. Looks like three men have been here. He arrived at 11.30. Chadwick and I, in an adjoining room with the door cracked, watched his wary entrance. Who are you? The name is on the door. Uh, Landro. You work under a license issued by the state of New York. Sometimes. 
But the license isn't important tonight. You won't make any trouble. Sit down. Well, Landro? Here it is. Uh-uh, just look. Name, a serial number, a date, a signature, and a thumbprint. Where is he? He'll phone me in the morning. Well, where is the man from the insurance company? Looking for Chadwick. He doesn't know about this yet. Why? Why has he waited this long? He didn't know everything that had happened. You and his wife. The money you made on him. What's the price? Well, as he put it to me, it ought to be figured from the 20 grand you took and the advance you've made in the company the last few years. How much? He'd like to start at 15,000. It would take a while. 5,000 tomorrow, say around noon. The other 10 within a week. That's when you get the license. Well, it would have to be later than noon tomorrow, but uh, I brought 1,500 with me. That's a deal. All right. I'll give it to you. Hey, watch it. Don't do it. Anderson. Wait, dollar. Landro, down. Landro. I'm all right. Chadwick. 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 Pulse. Pull his collar down. Nothing? <sighs> Nothing. I don't know what your company can do about it now. Both Mr. and Mrs. Anderson gave statements to the police that same night, confessing their contribution to the original crime. You will have a hard time prying Harold Anderson loose from the clutches of the state, which is working on a murder indictment for him. About the wife, Grace, I don't know. If she's not found guilty as an accessory, I'd be happy to appear as a witness if she's brought to trial on fraud charges. As for my part in it, I'm not proud of myself, but I was hired to find a dead man. And I finally found one, just before he lived. Expense account total, $1,575.30. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar stars Edmund O'Brien in the title role and is written by Gil Dowd and David Ellis with music composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Edmund O'Brien can soon be seen starring in the Columbia Pictures production, The Los Angeles Story. Featured in tonight's cast were Lillian Bieff, Walter Burke, Virginia Gregg, John Boehner, Ben Wright, Tudor Owen, and Ted Osborne. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. Join us again next week at this same time when, from Hollywood, Edmund O'Brien returns in another transcribed adventure of... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Every Wednesday night, CBS brings you Groucho Marx with his brilliant quiz, You Bet Your Life. It's one of the brightest, most spontaneous, most genuinely funny shows on the air. So be listening this Wednesday night on most of these same CBS stations for You Bet Your Life, starring Groucho Marx. Stay tuned now for the adventures of Philip Marlowe which follow over most of these same CBS stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.